Hello. Hi, Dr. Marengo. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Chrissy? Great. So I bet you've heard a lot of crazy questions about abortions. A lot of crazy questions. Yes, I know I have too. Um, today, let's address the elephant in the room and answer some of those for everyone. All right, let's do it. Okay. So here's one that I've actually heard a lot. I'm pro-choice, but why would anyone wait until the second trimester to have an abortion? That is a really great question. And I can tell you that every patient has a reason as to when and why they're choosing an abortion that is individual and very personal to them. And we just don't walk in the, that person's shoes. For example, a woman may know she's pregnant right away and she actually finds out when she's already in the second trimester. She could be using some method of birth control and just didn't think she could be pregnant. Mm -hmm. Or she has really irregular cycles, so she didn't find out until the second trimester. <clears throat> Excuse me. She could find out in the first trimester, but live in one of those states we've talked about that has really hard access problems to safe and legal abortion because of restricted laws. Mm -hmm. And another reason could be financial barriers. The patient may not have insurance. She may not have insurance that covers an abortion. So she's passing the hat to her family members and friends to try to get her safe first trimester abortion. And by the time she saves enough money, she's already into her second trimester. So, Finally, it's really very possible that she has a highly desired pregnancy. She's really looking forward to having a baby. And she finds out at her 18 or 20 week ultrasound that the baby has a lethal anomaly or a significant problem that's really not compatible with a healthy life in the future. And she needs to make that difficult decision in the second trimester to end her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I could go on with so many more examples, but again, we just don't walk in our patient's shoes. So Chrissy, I have a question for you. Okay. People often tell me that they totally support the right to abortion, but they say they just can't believe that some women know they don't want to be pregnant and refuse to use birth control. It makes them want to scream, get your life together. And some people think this is equal to women just using abortion as birth control. How do you respond to questions like that? Yes, I, I've actually heard that question a lot also. Um, and the way I answer it is that people's lives are complicated. There are many reasons that a person may not be using birth control or might decide to have an abortion. Um, they might not have access. We've talked about access a lot here today. They may not have um, a local health center that they can go to, or they might not have safe and reliable transportation to get there. Cost could be an issue. Their insurance may not cover the birth control method, or it might be too, too expensive for them. There also may be issues within the relationship or reproductive coercion. Um, a person may have to leave an abusive home with nothing, including their birth control. Or they may have a partner that's trying to force a pregnancy or an abortion. Um, there's also a lot of reasons that people can't take hormonal birth control. One of those is that it could be detrimental to their health. So the bottom line is that we need to trust people to make the right decisions for their bodies. Absolutely. So I have another question. This one's been in the news recently. Um, I have a friend in Iowa who asked, what's the big deal with the six-week abortion bill? Unfortunately, it's not just uh, Iowa. I mean, many other states that we've already heard about have been passing these very restrictive laws. And let's just be honest, a six-week restriction on birth control is essentially a ban on abortion. Six weeks of pregnancy is defined as six weeks from the first day of your last menstrual period. And many women don't even realize that they're pregnant in this time frame. So, you know, again, they could have had irregular periods, their method of hormonal birth control failed. These states know that these laws are egregious, but they're pushing these dangerous and ridiculous restrictions with the hope that a case will go in front of the Supreme Court so that those who oppose abortion may have a chance to get Roe overturned. A six-week ban on abortion is unconstitutional, and women will face undue burden trying to obtain an abortion either out of state or take matters into their own hands and try a self-administered abortion because of lack of access. Again, restrictive laws like this just make abortion less safe. Okay. Well, wow, thank you. Um, here's another one. This is one that we've also heard in the news recently. Um, I hear some states are changing their laws to allow abortion right up until the day before the baby is born, or even that the doctor can kill the baby after it's born. What's up with that? It's really sad that I have to answer this question and defend uh, my colleagues, my, my fellow abortion providers, doctors out there. I need everyone to hear this loud and clear. That is an outright lie. What states like New York are doing are cleaning up their state laws that were made prior to Roe v. Wade so that they're consistent with the protections in Roe. What has happened is that now that these states are bringing their legislation up to date, the opponents of abortion have flooded social media and the airwaves with claims that doctors are doing abortions for women up to the day they are born, um, or even more ridiculous, killing babies after they're born. 
These opponents to abortion are purposely trying to induce a moral panic in our country in order to gain more support for their desire to eliminate all abortion. I can tell you, in my over 15 years of obstetric practice, I have never had a patient ask me for a 39-week elective abortion. I know of no other obstetrician ever who has done an elective 39-week abortion. At 39 weeks, when we are trying to end a pregnancy, so abortion means ending a pregnancy, it's to save the life of the mother or to make sure we're delivering a healthy baby. At 39 weeks, what these people are purporting as an abortion is an induction of labor or a cesarean delivery. We are doing that to save the baby. Newsflash. There are quite legitimate reasons a woman might need an abortion over what is generally considered the gestational age of viability. The mother may have a life-threatening condition that is being worsened by her continued pregnancy or find out after 24 weeks that her baby has a lethal condition. And I hate to point out the obvious, but again, no one is killing a baby after it's born because the mother wanted an abortion and just didn't get one in time. That's not an abortion, it's infanticide, <laughs> and opponents to abortion have taken their false claims way into crazy town. <laughs> so Chrissy, I have a question. Okay. I often hear other parents who just can't believe abortion is being taught to eighth graders during some of their health classes. They think that's much too young to be talking about something so controversial. What do you say? So first off, abortion isn't controversial. Seven in 10 people, as we've talked about today, support abortion. And abortion's actually common. One in four people will have an abortion in their life. Many youth, including eighth graders, are talking about sex. But what they're talking about is usually inaccurate information, it's based on myths, and it's just flat out wrong, which can be really dangerous for them in their future. So it's our responsibilities as the adults to, to provide the medically accurate information so that young people be prepared to make healthy and respectful decisions later in their life when they are ready. Absolutely. I got another one for you. Okay. All right. So why would anyone oppose common sense regulations on abortion, such as waiting periods um, and ensuring doctors performing abortions have admitted privileges at local hospitals? Well, there's nothing really common sense about those, and we'll get to that. But we already have common sense regulations on abortion with several cases tried before the Supreme Court. Roe v. Wade and a subsequent case, Casey versus Planned Parenthood, made clear three things. One, women have the right to abort pre-viability without undue interference from the state. Two, the state may restrict abortion post-viability. And three, the state has a legitimate interest in protecting the woman's health and the life of the fetus. The rest of those decisions are made between the woman and her physician. The opponents of abortion are trying to sell the idea that waiting periods help women by allowing them to think about their desired abortion just a little bit longer. All this does is delay the procedure and allows the opposition to pressure or bully women into changing their minds, going to crisis pregnancy centers to make sure they have all of their options. And forcing abortion providers to have admitting privileges at a local hospital are putting a burden on providers and allowing hospitals that might be anti-choice to block providers from the ability to provide care, often driving abortion providers out of state. An abortion done in a clinic is a very safe procedure with a very low complication rate. None of these regulations are common sense. They are purposely designed to be barriers to access of abortion and make a very safe procedure less safe. I trust people with their decision to have an abortion and these regulations get in the way of women and families making the right decision for themselves. And that point about trusting people is key. Um, that's, why, that's what we default to when we're answering these crazy questions is that it really is about trusting people to make their own medical decisions. Thank you. Thank you.